Good morning. As Christ followers, we get to sing a new song. Not one that describes the world as it is now, but a song that describes the new reality we are called to be God through Christ. Hear these words from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all of their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsaken them. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen.
friends, our Lenten journey continues, and if you are in a small group, I sincerely hope that you have been sharing together uh, the words of the book that we have been using this season. I, I pray that you have begun and continue to experience that Lenten journey, that Lenten discipleship journey that draws us closer to the very presence and the heart of Jesus. And I pray that in this Lenten experience, not only have you been drawn closer in your experience, but I pray that you've also had a glimpse of what the world might look like if we truly implemented the ways of Jesus. That's where we are in our sacred text this week, to think about the world in which it may be rather than the way, the world that it is as we currently know it. And if you're anything like me, and if you're a bit of an addict on Facebook, you'll probably know that the world is not quite as we want it to be. The world is not quite in that place of peace and harmony and joy. In fact, it seems that there is such division in our world, such polarization in our world, that it feels like to me that we need Jesus to come again to come again into the world and to draw us closer, not only to the heart of God, but closer to the hearts of each other. And to be mindful of what God is calling each and every one of us to do and to be and to recognize the importance of people's lives. In our scripture reading, the ancient text from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is the prophet a prophet that speaks about the future. Now, we often get confused about the role of a prophet. We often think that a prophet is a bit like a fortune teller. A prophet is someone who speaks about what the future could look like. But a prophet's role is not quite that. A prophet's role is for someone to live in the future as if it already exists. The prophet's role is to live into, to lean into the ways in which the world could be in its reality. And so often in the words of the prophet Isaiah, in fact, in the words of the prophet we call Jesus, we see these prophets speaking about a world as if it already exists, a world in which we manifest goodness and blessedness and holiness, a world in which this prophet Isaiah talks about how the lands will become islands and the ways in which God will not forsake those who often are left behind. Jesus speaks those words himself. He speaks about a, a world that flows with milk and honey, a world in which all are included, a world in which justice reigns, a world in which God's heaven comes here on earth and speaks passionately not only about what that world could look like, but I would say that Jesus lives as if that world already exists. In fact, perhaps it is the manifestation of the prophet, the manifestation of Jesus' love, the manifestation that drew those disciples to constantly follow Jesus. Not just to follow his words, but to be beckoned into the world in which it could be. Perhaps that's what the role of the follower of Jesus today is to do and to be, is to live in the world as if it already is a world flowing with milk and honey, a world as if it already abounds in love and grace, a world in which truly those of us who are followers of Jesus become the prophets for the world today, to sing a new song to sing a, a song that is full of grace and compassion, to sing a song that is filled with God's grace, to, to sing a song as if the notes already make sense. Can you imagine what it would be like if truly those who are called as followers of Jesus might sing a new song today? Not, not a song of the past, not a, a song of, of woe and, and, and sorrow and, and hurt and pain, but what it would be like if we were truly to be able to manifest a world, a song, a new beginning of this creation in which all people count, all people matter. What would it be like if we could learn the notes of that new song? A new song that is new every morning. A, a new song that beckons us, welcomes us, creates in us a new world every single day. A new world where we don't have to keep looking back. 
but a new world in which we get to create its future. I wonder what that new song would be like if we truly began to live as if all people were equal, as if all people counted. I, I wonder what that new song, that new world would look like if we truly were able to give up the past and step into not just the present, but into the future. A future that we get to create together. You see, the notion of this God that we worship is not a God who is already creating it for us, but a God who is inviting us to co-create it with God, to be partners with God, to, to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit that enables us to live differently, to be different, to live with that new song pumping through our bodies and on our hearts every single day and to create it together, to create it in such a way that those who would follow us would not only inherit that, that new land, that place of milk and honey, but would also then be responsible for making that a new reality every single day as well. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a future. The prophet Jesus speaks of a future, but they live as if it already exists. And you and I, as the followers of the way, the truth, the life, you and I, as followers of Jesus, are called into that new space ourselves, to live more fully into that space. And living more fully into that space, not only do we find our place at the table, but it makes it so much easier for us to welcome others at the table as well. That's the grace that we live in, a grace that we cannot earn, a, a grace that we cannot buy, but a grace that is available to each and every one of us just as we are. Why is it so difficult for us to believe that God is big enough to love us just as we are? Why is it that we find it almost impossible to believe that we can be loved in God's grace and abundance at the expense of someone else not being loved? Why is it that we can't believe that somehow this God that is vast and huge and great and yet is small enough to care for you and for me? Why is it that we somehow have to believe in a God who wants to exclude some and punish others? Usually for the very same things that we think people should be punished for. The good news of this God is a God who invites us to sing a new song and to live into a new reality. A new song and a new reality that we get to create together. And I honestly believe, I truly believe, I have to believe that in this Lenten journey, this Lenten experience, you and I are being called to dwell in that place, a new place. What would it be like tomorrow if you went back to your places of work or the places where you volunteer and lived as if that already exists, as if that world, where not only you are included, but those around you are included. Not only are you forgiven, but those around you are forgiven. That not only those around you are forgiven, but those who are around them are loved and forgiven as well until this new song, this new reality is created in you and me. And no longer will there be the need for left and right or right and wrong or progressive and conservative but a place where we get to live in that new reality together. A new reality that we get to create. I truly believe that's what was Cathedral of Hope was being called to be in 1970 when it was created at the very beginning to be that prophetic church that lived as if LGBT people were welcome in the church long before the church said it was okay. And together over these last, how many years is it now? 53 years, we have lived into that new reality as if it already exists. And you know what has happened? It now exists. 
in churches and places around the world that we never believed we would be welcome. But we had the tenacity and the foresight and the ways of the prophet to live into that new song long before it was popular. Long before you and I found a place at the table. That new song now has to include women and people of color and those who consistently are on the margins. And we live into that new reality because that's the role of the prophet. That's the new song that you and I get to sing this day. If it was done for us, we must do it for everybody else. If the new realm of God is here on earth as it is in heaven, we sing a new song this morning, even at 8.30 in the morning <laughs> or 7.30, whatever time it is right now. We must sing that new song because the Spirit is beckoning us. I would say the Spirit is depending on us. And the Spirit is stirring us this morning, even in our slumber. The Spirit is stirring in us this morning to sing that new song and to create the new reality. We can't stop just because we've been included. We have to keep moving. We have to keep going. We have to keep living and singing that new song, that new reality that the prophet Isaiah spoke for the people of Israel and that Jesus breathed into the lives of those disciples who followed John and called them to follow him. Who am I, Jesus would say. And the disciples in their foresight said, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the one that we have dreamed about and lived into this new reality. And Jesus sang a new song. Perhaps it was an old song that was being re-released in a new voice. But it was a new song that spoke passionately and gracefully, not a God of vengeance, but a God of grace and love. A God that would open the table not just to the Israelites, but to those who had once felt they were excluded and who would welcome not only the poor of those disciples, the lowliness of those disciples that would raise them up to be the leaders of this new faith. We sing a new song this morning, a song of justice and equality. A song that is countercultural, a song that goes away from the, the old religion and leads us firmly into something new so that we might land on the other side. And that song is in our bodies. That song has been in the ways in which we've been discriminated against. That song is in our bodies that we have found a place at the table. That song sings within us so that we might sing it for the world. I want to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not the new seekers this morning. Or perhaps I am. Perhaps I am a new seeker of not of the old religion, an old religion that sometimes keeps itself to itself, but a new seeker of the religion of Jesus that wants to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. May we sing that new song this day. May we be emboldened by the new song of Jesus. May we hear the song of Isaiah who called them to a new land. May we hear the words of Jesus who says, I will make all things new. And may we embody that for ourselves. So that when we find ourselves at the end of this Lenten journey, in preparation for the Easter sunrise and the resurrection of Jesus, not only have we heard the new song, but that we're ready to deliver on it. First with those around us and those beyond us. A new song. A song that lives within us. 
A song that calls us into that new reality. A song that makes all things new. Not just for the prophet Isaiah or for Jesus and the disciples or for those who would follow and found the early church, but for those of us who are hungry for something beyond an old religion that was all about guilt and fear and shame to find a new song in us and a new church within us that calls us into the place of grace and love and compassion. A song that brings about peace and harmony and calls us back to the reality of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Perhaps that's what resurrection is really all about. Living into the new song and the new reality of God's new realm here on earth as it is in heaven. May you join me and those around you this day in singing that new song and living in a new reality that we don't have to wait for, but we can live as if it already exists. May the prophet in each and every one of us be stirred up this morning so that we live in the way of Jesus. May it be so for each and every one of us. Amen. God bless you. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given and the blessing of God known to us as creator savior and holy spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore